Welcome back to the studio, everybody. I'm joined by a guest, none other than Attorney General John Swallow, and we're here to talk about your rights. So today we're going to talk about um, pregnancy in the workplace. So a lot of people, you know, they'll either get a job um, and they know they're pregnant or they'll know they'll want to be pregnant. Um, and sometimes their employer can be a little bit cagey about hiring them or giving them, um, you know, the kind of treatment that they need and deserve in the workplace. So can you talk to us a little bit about some of the common issues that you see and cases that you've dealt with in this sphere? Right, well, first of all, let me just say that um, you have a right to not be discriminated against based on a pregnancy situation. And some employers will um, discriminate because you're of childbearing years or you tell them you're pregnant and there, there is absolute no way they can discriminate against you lawfully for being pregnant or for being of the age where you can bear children. Um, where you really get in trouble is where you're actually having your work um, impacted by the advanced stages of pregnancy, right? And that's where people maybe take a little bit of time off or can't do some of the things they used to be able to do. And we can kind of talk about some of those uh, situations and what an employer can or can't do. But they cannot discriminate against you just because you're pregnant or just because uh, you're a child bearing years. Under federal law, I think the law was passed in 1978 called the Pregnancy Discrimination Act. Awesome. Um, so if I'm, you know, of childbearing years and, and I feel like in an interview, I was, um, well, first off, I, I have heard of people literally bosses asking directly, like, are you pregnant or are you planning on being pregnant? And that's just, you, you can't do that. You literally can't ask that. Right. Um, um, so beyond that, if you feel like you were passed up on an opportunity, if you feel like you were a more qualified candidate, what kind of steps can you take, um, to, to get what you were looking for? Like either to, you know, hopefully get the job or to, to seek reparations for that. Right. So first of all, pro tip for employers, uh, don't ask those questions. Yeah. Um, because if you do ask those questions and if there's something that happens that where a person is demoted or fired, the first thing you're going to get is a letter from a lawyer and then probably a lawsuit saying you've discriminated against my client for being pregnant, being a woman in childbearing years, and that's discrimination. It's part of Title VII now. It was added to Title VII in uh, 1978. Um, and so the question is, you know, where do you go if you feel like, what do you do if you feel like you've been discriminated against? And, and the answer is you go to find a good lawyer. But, but before you do that, you try to find all the evidence you possibly can. Um, you know, coworkers, did they overhear the exchange? Um, did you happen to get a recording? Uh, was the meeting interview that you were in recorded by your boss or by you? In many states, you can actually record an interview without even letting your boss know uh, under certain state laws. Like in Utah, where I practice most of my work, um, if you know you're recording, it's a lawful recording, you can actually keep a record of, of the interview. But finding the evidence, the email, the text message, the recording, the witness is very important to a discrimination claim. And as you go interview with lawyers, the more evidence you have, the more likely you'll find a very good lawyer who's willing to take the case on a contingency or for a reasonable cost. That's fascinating. And um, so obviously in, in these private interviews, that's kind of where a lot of this, these things come out and that's where the evidence comes out. Um, there's been a lot of talk recently about quiet quitting amongst employees um, and also quiet firing by employers where they'll just give employees less work and hope that they kind of leave and wither away and just get out. Um, how, do you, how would you go about proving that? And is that something that you can um, seek reparations for? Right, so per se, a quiet, a quiet quitting is where you just don't show up to work mentally. Yeah. You physically show up and, and you know, can you be fired for a lack of performance? Absolutely. Are there protections to a person who is, is quiet quitting? Not really. And in fact, the risk is that you'll be let go for a lack of performance and then it'll, it'll show up on your, your resume or in some, in some way down the road as someone maybe makes a comment about you kind of giving up on the job and not being a faithful, a loyal employee. As far as employers um, not giving you enough work, unless they're discriminating against you for a protected reason, like because of age, national origin, uh, religion, uh, based on gender, um, based, based on ethnicity, you really don't have much of a claim against um, your employer unless you have a contract. Most employers don't have contracts with their employees. Most states are at will, so they can terminate you for any reason or for no reason. So unless it's a discriminatory reason and you have evidence of that, you don't have much of a luck uh, of a lawsuit against your employer for them not giving you enough work to be satisfied with your job. Interesting. So if they put you on, you know, projects that are, you know, less desirable or just won't show up in the bottom line, like that is something that that's not something you can use as evidence 
And in that case, he would need to go to other employees who have overheard reasons for why he's or she, your boss has been doing these things, right. um, in which case you just need to go somewhere else. But that in and of itself is not evidence um, to make that claim. Right, unless you're a member of a protected class. And then you have the evidence that is discrimination based on your standing as a member of a protected class. Again, age, race, religion, national origin, sexual uh, orientation. And unless you can prove that, you don't have much of a case for discrimination because you're, everyone discriminates, right? You just can't discriminate based on those protected uh, categories. Gotcha. And then um, in terms of, uh, you know, if you're pregnant and, you know, you've been working th all throughout your pregnancy, um, you've been a good employee, and then you have your baby, what kind of protections do you have once you have that child? Right. So basically the, the bottom line is the, the, these anti-discrimination acts on a federal level, usually apply to an employer with 15 or more employees. So the very, very, very small companies, uh, they don't have the same protections as the larger companies. Uh, basically what you're entitled to is the same protections that anybody else with a temporary disability would have. So if they have a sick leave policy, you're entitled to partake of the sick leave policy. If they have a, a policy of how they deal with someone with a temporary disability, you're you're able to do that. If, if, if they're subject to the federal um, uh, Medical Leave Act, family, so Federal Family Leave Act, then you also are entitled to the benefits of that, that policy. So there's not like a specific category that applies specifically to like pregnancy leave or anything like that, but it's treated like a, just a regular leave of absence or sickness or temporary disability under the other laws that protect you. Gotcha. And that makes sense, right? Because I mean, part of the rule of law is that you can't make laws that are for you know specific people, but it has to be general principles that will then be applied and and have reference cases that uh, that really protect you from those broad types of categories of laws that the federal laws are designed to protect. Thank you so much for elaborating on that, John. You bet. I hope you guys had all of your questions answered, and if you have any more, um, feel free to click that link below where John will. You can personally reach out to John and his team, and they'll be able to get in contact with you. Smash that like button and we'll see you on the next one.